All right. Well, welcome everyone and good morning. Thank you for joining us today. And we are here for the Microsoft Copilot Studio webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Carla Beranger. I'm a technical specialist for Power Platform, and I'm here today with my colleague. Hi, I'm Anna Plantjes. I'm also a Power Platform specialist, and I'm going to do the live demo. So I will live live to the max today. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, before we get started, let me walk you through the agenda for today. So first things first, we'll start with an introduction. So I'll give you a bit more context as to what we can expect from today's session. Then uh, we will discuss why Copilot Studio. So how can this be maybe relevant to you and your organization? And then we'll dive into what Copilot Studio is and what the capabilities are and what it can allow you to do. And like Anna mentioned, he will do the fun stuff and he will demo you live what uh, Copilot Studio is and uh, some solutions that he prepared already. Uh, whether you are new to Copilot Studio or whether you already know a bit um, what it is, we hope that by the end of this session you can get some new insights, maybe get inspired um, and hopefully get some positive outcomes. Okay, so for those of you that uh, are maybe already familiar with it and for those of you that don't know yet, Copilot Studio is only one of five main components that make up the Power Platform. And the Power Platform is our low-code, no-code uh, platform that allows you to create very easy and quick uh, tailored-made solutions for your business. Um, with easy drag and drop, you can do many things, including, and I will walk you through uh, very quickly, the main components. So first of all, we have Power Apps. Power Apps allows you to do uh, application development uh, for both web and mobile applications. Then we have Power Automate, which allows you to do end-to-end -end process automation and hyper automation, ranging from process and task mining to digital process automation and robotic process automation. Then we have Power BI for data analytics and data reporting. And finally, we have uh, Power Pages for externally facing websites, um, for your vendor, customers, partners, or else. And then of course, Microsoft Copilot Studio, which is the focus for today. And that is our conversational AI capability. All right, also to give you a bit more context, because one of the things we'll be discussing today as well a lot is AI. Uh, AI is nothing new. We have been uh, working on embedding AI within the platform since 2019. We started with some AI builder models, which come from Azure. And uh, those allow you to do certain things like extracting information from documents or detecting objects and images. Uh, slowly, we progress into natural language processing. And with that, you can describe in natural language what you would like your application to do, for example, or what you would like your automation to do. And our software will help you get quick started. And today we're going to be focusing on the fully right-hand side. Just for you to know, we did already two previous webinars, including Power Apps Copilots and Power Automate Copilots. And if you want to watch those ones again, they are available to rewatch. And today, of course, we're going to be diving into right now Copilot Studio. So before we get started, I think uh, an important question is the why is this relevant? And if you are familiar with building conversational AI, you might know that there are a lot of challenges that arise with this practice, including budget and time constraints, right? You need professional developers to be uh, onboarded into using new tools. Uh, there's also a shortfall in developers. But not only that, you also need to think about potential questions that users might have answers to those questions. And of course, you also need to hard code all of those, as well as maintain the content up to date so that you are always on point and uh, tailoring your solution. And um, as a reason, because of these challenges, uh, building conversational AI has also changed and it has also evolved. And we're slowly seeing a democratization of bot building. So what you can see on the left-hand side is the more 
um, beginning of bot building with a domain that was specialized for data scientists and also professional developers that had to build custom solutions or built in-house solutions uh, using pro codes. So this was very niche and uh, also quite an extensive process that took uh, a lot of time and resources. And that is why we have seen a transition towards low codes and uh, enabling anybody and everybody to build their own tailor-made solutions uh, very easily and very quickly as well. For those of you working longer in the Power Platform, that's the stage that we call Power Virtual Agents. Awesome. It's good to uh, know that because we tend to rename a lot of our products. So Go by the Studio used to be named uh, Power Virtual Agents, but now also with the move towards uh, generative AI and new capabilities, uh, it has been renamed to Go by the Studio. Uh, so of course, after introducing low code, we're now introducing the new technologies of large language models, natural language processing and generative AI. And that is also what we're going to be focusing on today because it's the value that Copilot Studio brings to you as well. To clarify as well, you might have heard about Copilot Studio a lot of times and in a lot of different Copilots. And we know this might be confusing at points because we have a big ecosystem of Copilots. Uh, so I will also explain to you the differences between the Copilots you have probably heard of and Copilot Studio. So to start it off, what you can see in the top layer are the first party co-pilots that have been uh, built and trained by Microsoft. These are built in in our products, including, for example, Microsoft 365 co-pilots, uh, co-pilot for sales, co-pilot for service and finance as well. And you can also see here in the graph co-pilot for power platform. This is something I will refer to in the next slide as well, but there are some differences here as well, so bear, bear with me. Um, and of course, you can also see that you can include uh, co-pilots that you build custom from third-party tools or also uh, other co-pilots built with Copilot Studio. So the first layer are first-party co-pilots, and then what you see in the middle layer are is Copilot Studio. What it can allow you to do is either extend or customize those first party copilots that you see in the top layer or to build your own custom ones using Copilot Studio. And lastly, and we will discuss this also a bit later on, the bottom layer are the uh, further capabilities that you can uh, push into Copilot Studio uh, so that you can leverage Azure Cognitive Services, for example, including speech to text or AI builder models as well that can allow um, your Copilot Studio to uh, leverage AI capabilities. All right, so just in case this was uh, not clear enough, because I know it can be confusing, I'm going to explain again that there are three major types of Copilots uh, within uh, the Microsoft ecosystem. The first one are embedded co-pilots. These are integrated within our products. They have been, they basically come out of the box uh, by us and they can typically not be extended. So what I was mentioning before with um, co-pilot for Microsoft Power Platform means that if you've seen the webinars before for Power Apps Copilot and Power Automate Copilot, these cannot be extended. These come out of the box, they're built in, in our product and they can help you uh, build your solution. So for example, describing what you want your application to look like and then getting uh, a software uh, suggestion as to what it could look like, some uh, dumb data, dummy data, um, and else. So this is embedded. This cannot be extended and generally it just helps you use the product. Then we have the solution accelerator. These are also the built-in solutions like M365 Copilot, Copilot for sales, Copilot for service. So these are built in, but they can be extended because of course they come out of the box, but what we want to allow you is to create solutions that are meaningful and tailored to your business needs. And therefore you can use Copilot Studio to extend the capabilities by, for example, connecting to some of your other line of business applications or um, other third party tools. Um, of course, these are channel limited, so that is also the difference with the custom copilots. So, custom copilots are all the copilots that you will build using Copilot Studio. 
They are custom made to your needs and they can be extended as much as you want and also published to multiple channels, including internal and external facing. And now that we've seen what the differences between the copilots are, let's see what actually is within Copilot Studio. So in Copilot Studio, and this you will see also from NSMO, you have a building studio. There is where you're gonna be working on all the capabilities. You have some workspaces where you can do generative AI or you can enable generative AI. You can also connect to plugins, but you can also do the publishing to different channels and also getting analytics and insights as to how your bot is performing, how it is answering the questions and also making sure that all your content is ready and connected. Automation Studio is part of the added functionality and this is because you can create automations from uh, Power Automate that you can then connect to your co-pilot so that when triggered in a conversation, it will run that uh, workflow. And of course, the Admin Studio for Central Administration where you can maintain everything compliant and uh, with your governance um, framework. Before we go to the fun parts, let me actually discuss in the theoretical side how it works when you're building the copilot. And of course, this is a cycle that keeps on uh, bettering itself because at the very beginning, when you start building your copilot, you're going to first be prompted to connect or to enable generative AI. Of course, this is a decision that you can take. But the first thing is you can connect it either to public websites or to uh, you can upload also internal documents like knowledge, um, knowledge documents, onboarding documents, uh, anything you can imagine. And also connect it to SharePoint sites, for example. Once you've done that, you will be uh, capable as well of authoring your own topics. So if you have questions that you know uh, the answers to and you would like the co-pilot to uh, answer those questions immediately from an authored topic, then that will be um, a way to supplement the generative answers. And also just for your information, Copilot Studio will first go through your authored topics or your scripted uh, answers and then it will rely on generative AI to answer what has not been um, already predetermined. Aside from the topics of the conversation, you can of course extend the capability with actions and plugins. This allows you to uh, connect to different uh, backends and APIs, for example, uh, your line of business applications, including your CRM system or your um, ERP systems to get more insights out of your data, but then even be able to generate actions like uh, deleting or extracting uh, information as well as, for example, connecting to the automations that you've created in the Automation Studio. After you've uh, made your co-pilots and personalized that to your needs, you will, of course, be able to publish that to multiple channels, both, both internal and external, very easily. And then what you just have to do is to monitor and keep on improving that co-pilot. So based on the analytics that you get out of it, you'll understand whether it is answering correctly your questions, uh, how many times it is maybe handing that back to a uh, real agent. And with that, you can continue this cycle of improving it. And lastly, it does not only stop here, you can even extend more the capabilities by connecting it to conversational services, including our Azure Cognitive Services, like mentioned before, or our AI Builder models, among all other. Uh, so this allows you to also leverage pro codes uh, or more professional developer tools to um, make it even more meaningful. And also to back this up regarding the uh, conversational services from Azure. As you can see here, this is a graph. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see uh, the questions that have been manually authored. So this also refers to what we mentioned before as the old way of hard coding. Your, co your conversational AIs, where you had to author the topics. So you really had to think and anticipate what topics users will maybe uh, trigger, what answers will come out of it. Um, and this is hard to maintain, right? Because every time you need to go back, add the new topics, generate new answers, 
and a lot of the opportunities uh, for conversations are missed. And that's what you see as well in red or pink, as you may see. So this was challenging, right? There were a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of conversations not answered, a lot of conversations escalated. Whereas what we're seeing now with generative AI is the possibility to have author topics. So a 20% of author topics that you want to hard code and then really uh, an 80% of questions that would be taken by generative AI with very um, concrete also uh, responses based on your data knowledge and data sources. So I think now that we've talked about the a bit more uh, theoretical parts, we're going to move on to the fun parts and actually put this into practice with Anna here. Okay, so you give me the floor now, actually. Yes. Thanks, Carla, onto that one. So if you can see my screen, and I hope you can do, but I'll see a lot of thumbs and things onto that one, and otherwise I'll be shouted from the background into that one. You see my Copilot Studio environment easily and overall. So as Carla said, eh, we have here a Copilot, basically that is the Copilot for service that I can extend in the Copilot Studio, which is not the topic of today, so I'll leave that one. I have your other co-pilots already ready, but the first thing I'm going to do is start and build a new co-pilot. So I'm going to start and we're going to give it a name and we're going to actually ask, see and check whether or not you paid attention to all the stuff Carla said. So we're going to create a web power platform. We're going to build it for the United States, but you see here a ton of languages that we support onto that one into that one. I'm going to enter the website and I already entered the website. This is the website that actually gives me information about the Power Platform on the learning page onto that one. I'm going to add it the advanced topics. I'm going to exclude the lesson topics because I don't want them. I already know them and I got them. And of course, as a proper Power Platform developer, I have made sure that I have a solution so that I can export it and transpose it from my demo environment into a production environment if I want to and I hit create. This will take some time to actually set up and this time I need to speak uh, or do those kind of things which I don't want to do. So what I'm going to do is actually have here already a co-pilot available which I created uh, yesterday or the day before. So this one's actually running and now I'm opening up this one with an overview where you can see that I created it. There are topics created here, the lesson topics are in but there are no other topics that I got and I got a virtual assistant. All I got is a system topic with conversational boosting. Like Carla said, what we are gonna do is not overwrite the topics that you have created. So what we're gonna do afterwards is on an unknown intent. So if we do not have a topic that we actually can match, we're gonna get into this conversational boosting topic. And what I'm gonna ask this bot is basically what are the main applications in the Power Platform? And see if we can, and I can't type, I see. It should work anyhow, but for the sake. What happens now actually is it will actually say, okay, I don't ever trick or phrase. I go out to the internet and I actually find here the message so it's power apps power automate power bi and power pages onto that one it misses copilot studio but it actually got here a link to the website where it found the information so you can check that one if you want to actually see that one and go for that one into that one so easily and if i would actually have here also tracing on and rerun the question Applications in the our platform. You see that it actually goes into that unknown intent and it will actually try to find them and come up with the same answer. So that's a cool thing. We got that one. What actually happened is if we look here into the settings and we go into generative AI, we see here that actual website where it's actually picking information from. On the other top, you see here that I can do upload a document. So I have created another copilot 
which is called Power Platform Licenses, where rather than actually doing a link to the web, I have here in Generative AI no website, but only the licensing guide. This license guide is then, as you saw in the picture of Carla, uploaded into the Dataverse. And now I can actually do conversations with information out of this specific file. So anybody knows the license guide. And instead of asking us, now you can easily ask a co-pilot, how can I license, and if you can spell, for instance, Power Automate. It will give us information about the license in the licensing guide. It will actually go through that one and it will actually find information about how I can license Power Automate. You see here how uh, it actually is and what you actually get on that information. So easily simply create over those documents. So you have different options as you can see here in the generative AI. You, you can use public websites that will actually use Bing search onto that one. I can use SharePoint sources. So SharePoint sources, the advantage of a SharePoint source over uploading a file is that it actually respects access. So if you do not have access on a SharePoint site to that particular document, the bot will not actually use or show you that information to actually in a generative answer. Mm. If I upload the document in the Dataverse, then we assume it's information that's available for everyone. So there's no way that we limit that one. So all information will be in there. So do not actually upload your salary scheme, <laughs> etc., into that one. Make sure that you do that one nice and credible. Of course, you can actually do moderation, but you can also actually add AI. So add actually a link to Azure OpenAI if you want to actually expose those documents and use Azure OpenAI for that one. Or you have the ability to also make sure that you would actually do that one not only through the standard integration, but through an integration, for instance, with the Power Platform, where you query that information, bring that information back, and then it will be actually in your generative answers as well onto that one. So those are easy and simple things to actually make sure that you get that 80% of the content that you want and that you do not want to maintain, that you want to have out of your documentation, out of sites, etc., into that one. So that's an easy start for doing those kind of things. But of course, there might be other co-pilots that you want to create as well, where you want to take control over what's been told, what's said, etc. So we're going to build a new co-pilot and we're going to call it the custom co-pilot. And if you can spell, then it works. We're not going to enter a website. We're not going to include the lessons. We're going to actually make sure that we do it in the webinar, in this case, and we hit create. What happens now is it will actually start to create a bot without any conversational boosting. So we're not going to get the questions and answers onto that one. What we're going to do now is actually start authoring topics. And we're going to go now, eh? so if we have here the other co-pilots that we got, which was the co-pilot for service, that's a template coming from us you can extend. We built a custom co-pilot directly in here. What we're going to do with this custom co-pilot is use basically for the topics, the co-pilot that comes inside the product that you can't change, can't do anything with. So that's out of the first three list of that one. So we're going to create something from a description and you saw my typing errors and that kind of stuff. So if you do not mind, this is a long sentence. <laughs> I do not want to add that one in there with all my typing errors. So I have here, basically, I want to create a topic. I named the topic create case. And I hit create. What happens now is the co-pilot, keep my fingers crossed, will actually create a setup, will actually create trigger phrases, so phrases where it actually is going to start, and it will create a full-blown conversation. So it says create a case, open a case, start a case, submit a case as my trigger phrases. It will say, okay, I asked the user to actually give uh, me uh, a, a problem. So describe the problem you're facing 
And then I said, I want to ask it for different departments because IT support uses ServiceNow, customer support uses Dynamic, and development uses Jira into that one. As you described, Carla, apart from the Copilot Studio, we also have the Automation Center into that one. So yeah. in the Automation Center, I already built actions to actually create a ticket in ServiceNow onto that one and one into actually Dynamics and one into Jira for that one. So all of them are available and what I can do now is here. So I actually need to select a department and based on that department, I will actually incorporate in this case an action. That will be an action out of my automation center in this case to actually do a ServiceNow action for IT support. I need to add the description which is basically the problem description. So the description of the user, it will then create a ticket in ServiceNow, will give me the case ID back. So what I can do here is actually make sure that I say registered. Oh, my typing is really good today. The case as, and I can actually use that particular variable back into that one. The same I could do here easily also add an action for dynamics, add the problem description and of course I can add the variable ID. Uh, it would be smart to actually do it above but I didn't do that one yet and I could do the same here also call an action with Jira. Hit save. So I have now created a custom copilot and let's see if it actually finishes saving. And triggers. I want to report a case. The computer, well, constantly reboots just in front of a webinar. Um, I think this is IT support. So it will go through and hopefully if my ServiceNow is aligned, yeah, it will give me information and give me information back out of ServiceNow so I can actually have this case report on this case, do the actions onto that one. And a similar trick would do if I would do this one. So what we used here is the Copilot in Copilot Studio to create a custom Copilot. <laughs> That's the maximum amount of copilot oh, you could set in uh, one sentence, I think, onto that one. So easy, but fairly quickly and highly adoptable, which I can bring out and do my things with onto that one. So I can easily do that one, create a case, and now I have a new copilot onto that one. We have here some other settings into that one as well, is because it might be difficult for you to maintain also the trigger sentences yeah. to actually do those kind of things. So we're not only using large language models to actually generate answers, but what we can also do is actually do dynamic chaining with generative actions. What happens then is you actually bring in, for instance, those uh, power automate flows that I got in my automation center. I bring them in actually as actions. I describe those actions, so I actually give in what they're supposed to do. So I give a proper description onto that one. And I actually then give in the inputs that I need to actually do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then our large language model will actually create the appropriate flow, will do the triggers to actually do those kind of things. If you think it's too much work to actually do it with a, with a copilot in Copilot Studio onto that one. A lot of copilots into that one, that, that kind of thing. So we have the ability to do that one as well. 
aren't you that easy thing to actually create that one. So what we have done now was actually show you the ability to actually create a co-pilot to make sure that you actually are going to do that one and generate answers so that you only maintain, for instance, your manuals and you actually read those manuals. Mm -hmm. You're not going to create the uh, complete topic. For those topics where you want to be in control of the answers, you can use Copilot Studio to actually create the topics. And if you want to create those things, not even, you can do generative actions to actually do those kind of things as well. And we deliver you also the ability to actually create multilingual bots. So we easily can here do a multilingual bot where you can switch between Netherlands and Dutch, uh, between English and Dutch onto that one. So you can change here the language also. Including direct. also other supported languages. And including also other supported languages, but you need to do still the translation. So we can export translation files and then um, actually do the translation of the sentences into that one and bring them back into a copilot. So you actually directly have a multilingual copilot onto that one for your website, to those kind of things. Um, that's nice and easy as well. So you create the topics. You have here underneath also languages where you can actually add a language, export a language, yeah. change that language file with regular expressions to actually make sure that the, the sentences you ask are translated, as you can see here. Eh? So if I switch on now languages, how can I help? But then in Dutch, if I would do that one in English, you get the new language as well onto that one. And with that one, I think we hammered them enough with demos in 10 minutes, enough information onto that one. Indeed. I think maybe it's good to do a little bit of a recap because it gets confusing with so many co-pilot notions and so many types of co-pilots. But I think Anne did very good at showcasing what I was actually explaining, but more in person in life. Uh, so indeed, you can see that it's very easy to use drag and drop functionality. You had no need to use code and he actually built very meaningful solutions in a matter of minutes. Here you can also find a couple of resources for later. But uh, as you can see, uh, based on what I explained, uh, Anne created one chatbot that used generative AI to answer your questions. He also created author topics very simply by also starting with Co the embedded copilots that's within Copilot Studio to quick starts that creation of topics very easily. But he also did, um, he also extended the capabilities of the copilots by including uh, an automation that he created in the automation studio and then surfacing that back into Copilot Studio, mm -hmm. including also connections to ServiceNow and some of the other line of business applications. Uh, so even though I hope we didn't confuse you too much with so many terms, um, I hope we were able to give you some uh, nice insights and hopefully inspire you a bit more as to what you can do within your business uh, to create solutions that are meaningful to you. And um, if you have any questions, please uh, do feel free. There, there is one question. I um, don't know if you want to answer it. Does Generative Answers work also with uh, Dynamics Finance and Operations? Um, Yes, it works if you actually get information back. So you can do a custom query for generative answers. And in ways in the meaning you need for that custom query is a description of the answer and a location on the uh, where you can find it. So a URL where you can find that information. If you bring that one back into a table, into uh, basically the conversational boosting topic, then you can actually also get information out of uh, dynamics, finance and operations onto that. And then I see at least somebody actually asking the question, can we get also a link to the previous, uh, uh, webinars? previous webinars? And we will do that one. Yes. yes. That one. Those were, I think, all of the questions that we actually see For in now? the chat. Yeah. But otherwise, feel free to uh, email us in case you are so interested in learning more about it. And thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. And uh, have a nice and wonderful day.